Hey, welcome to another week of Orange Baptist Church Children's Virtual Sunday School. Well, I need your help with something. I'm trying to make a cake and I have um, baking powder and baking soda, but I don't know which one is which because they, they don't really have a smell and they look exactly the same. Well, there is one way that I think we can figure it out. And this week for your craft, you guys can try this experiment at home too. All you need is baking powder, baking soda, and some white vinegar. So one of these, the one that's the baking soda, when you add it to the vinegar, it will completely and totally change. I'm not gonna give away what's gonna happen, I want you to see. So first we'll try this one, we'll see Here's my vinegar in my cup. Here's this one, Let's see what happens. Well, that didn't really do much except sink to the bottom. That must be the baking powder. Let's see what happens with the baking soda. You ready? I'm gonna do it over the sink because you'll be surprised. Hold on. Okay, let's see. <gasps> It completely changed, didn't it? It's like overflowing with explosion. So make sure when you try this at home this week that you do it over a sink or outside because it will go everywhere if you don't. Well, there we go. Now I can finish my cake. I know this one is the baking soda. Okay, so what you just saw was a chemical reaction when we added the baking soda to the vinegar um, it caused a chemical reaction which made it completely change and explode. Well, the reason I wanted you guys to try this experiment this week is because this reminds me of our story that we're gonna be talking about. So our story this week is called the transfiguration. That's a really big word and it sounds really um, crazy, but let me tell you what it is. It's basically when something changes its form or its appearance to become even more beautiful, okay? So I wanna read you the story. Now this story is in Matthew, Mark, and Luke, which means it must be really, really important for three different people to say, well, we need to talk about this. So I'm gonna to read to you from the book of Mark and it's chapter nine. And it goes like this. It's, this is starting at verse two. It says, six days later, three of them did see it. Now, when it says, what the, you're wondering, what did they see? Well, earlier in a conversation, Jesus talked to them about seeing the kingdom of God, okay? So it's saying now, three days later, they got to actually see it with their eyes. All right, Jesus took Peter, James, and John and led them up a high mountain. His appearance changed from the inside out, right before their eyes. His clothes shimmered, glistening white, whiter than any bleach could make them. Elijah, along with Moses, came into view in deep conversation with Jesus. Now, if you recall, this is the New Testament. Elijah and Moses had already died. So this was pretty crazy that they would be there speaking to Jesus in front of the disciples. Okay, Peter interrupted, Rabbi, this is a great moment. Let's build three memorials, one for you, one for Moses, and one for Elijah. He blurted this out without thinking stunned as they all were by what they were seeing. Just then, a light, radiant cloud enveloped them. That means it was all around them. And from deep in the cloud, a voice, this is my son, marked by my love. Listen to him. The next minute, the disciples were looking around and they were rubbing their eyes, seeing nothing but Jesus only Jesus. Coming down the mountain, Jesus swore them to secrecy. Don't tell us all what you saw. 
after the Son of Man rises from the dead, you'll be free to talk. They puzzled over that meaning. They thought and wondered. What on earth does rising from the dead mean? Okay, so I'm going to stop there because this story is pretty fantastic. Here we have three of Jesus' disciples, and they've been with him. They've seen some of the things that he's done, and they've talked with him at length about all sorts of things. But it was really important that Jesus had them know for certain who he truly was. Because as we know, we know the rest of the story. The rest of the story is soon after that, Remember, Jesus died on the cross, and he rose again from the dead three days later. Now, they didn't know this at the time. And so here we have Jesus showing them something, something that's so unbelievable and so out of the ordinary that there was no way in the world that they could possibly doubt that Jesus is who he says he is, which is the Son of God. And what did Jesus, I mean, what did God say about that, he said, listen to him. Yeah. So that word transfiguration talks about, it's, it's referring to Jesus' appearance. It completely changed right before the disciples' eyes. So after hearing that story, you might be thinking, okay, so what? What does this have to do with me? Why is this so important? Why is this in the Bible in three different books? Well, have you ever wondered if Jesus really is who he says he is? Do you think that um, we might have the same experience where Jesus will take us to the top of a hill and show us Elijah and Moses? Probably not. Probably not. But here's some really good news. The good news is, is that the Bible says that um, blessed are those who believe in him without seeing with their eyes. Isn't that cool? So when we have faith and we trust that Jesus is who he says he is, we will be blessed. And the other good news is, is that we have lots of stories we can read about when Jesus did those things. And not only that, but I want you to look out your window. Now, I'm looking out my window today. And there's snow covering the ground everywhere. There's snow in the trees. And did you know that each and every snowflake is completely different? Only somebody like God could do that. Look at your fingertips. If you'll notice, there's fingerprints on them. Did you know there's no one else in the whole world that has the same fingerprint as you? Also, there's nobody else that looks like you, that is you, that does what you do. You are the only you in the whole world. Only God can do that. So even though we might not have this mountaintop experience, we can look around and everywhere we look, we can see what God has done. We can see what God has created. We can see how much God loves us and loves everyone else because of how much time and attention he puts into all the beautiful things that he created all around us. And that's how we can know for certain that Jesus is who he says he was and God is who he says he is. And we can trust the words and the promises that he gives us in the Bible each day. So enjoy thinking about that this week. You are so blessed. And there's only one you, and you are amazing because God created you and he loves you. So let's thank him for that right now and let's pray. God, you are so amazing and you are so creative and I am so thankful that you have made us just the way you wanted us to be and that you have filled our life with so many beautiful things. Thank you for allowing us to be able to trust that you are who you say you are. In Jesus' name, amen. All right, so I have some special links for you this week. I think you're gonna like one in particular. It is a Lego version 
of the story that I told you. So they've acted out the transfiguration with little Lego figurines and I thought it was pretty top notch. So you should take a look at that. Also, um, there is a song that has to do with this Bible story as well. So you can even learn the story more and more by singing the words that come from our scripture. I hope you enjoy and I hope you enjoy the experiment and remember, do it over sync because it gets pretty messy. All right, I hope you have a great week. I'm gonna get back to making my cake. Bye-bye.